Intel has just announced their 12th gen CPUs for desktop. With the new hybrid architecture of P cores and E cores, DDR5 and PCIe 5 and everything else. The specs look pretty good and this might be the first time buying Intel has been genuinely compelling for the last few generations. We will have a full review out next week, so check back for detailed performance testing and a proper assessment of how good the new CPUs are. But for now, we will be taking a look at the Z690 AeroG and the Z690i Aeros Ultra, two of Gigabyte's Z690 boards that accompany their 12th gen CPUs. To start off, let's take a look at what the Z690 chipset actually is. For this initial release of 12th gen CPUs, Intel is only releasing the unlocked Enthusiast Class K and KF series CPUs. At the same time, only Z690 motherboards will be available, no B660 or H670 yet. The mainstream and budget-focused CPUs and chipsets will only be available next year. The highlight features of Z690 are support for PCIe Gen 5 on the first slot and also DDR5 on some models. Now to make this clear, the CPUs themselves support both DDR4 and DDR5, but the motherboard does not. Each board will only support either DDR4 or DDR5, but never both. For Gigabyte, some motherboard models will have both DDR4 and DDR5 variants and they are labelling the boxes with special callouts for the RAM type, so make sure to double check before buying. For PCIe lanes, the configuration for Z690 is a little confusing, so let's go over it one by one. The lanes that come from the CPU are 16 Gen 5 lanes for the top GPU slot and 4 Gen 4 lanes for the top SSD slot. The rest of the lanes come from the chipset, and the Z690 chipset has 12 Gen 4 lanes and 16 Gen 3 lanes. How these lanes are configured depends on the motherboard. For the Aero-G, the 12 Gen 4 lanes are used for the 3 M.2 slots, giving this board a total of 4 M.2 slots, all at full Gen 4x4 bandwidth. The Gen 3 lanes are then used for these two full-length slots, but with only X4 bandwidth each. Other than the headlining features, we also see an interesting trend with the Z690 boards. The spacing between the first and second PCIe slots are now four slots apart. I think this is an indication that manufacturers are expecting next-gen GPUs to be thicker than ever. Maybe three slots thick will be the standard. But this means that multi-GPU setups are more difficult than ever. And for Gigabyte motherboards, you're basically limited to two GPUs since the spacing is only one slot between the second and third slots. At Dreamcore, we still see some demand for triple and quad GPU setups from creators. So we hope Gigabyte will bring back a layout that will still allow for at least triple GPUs. The Z690i Aeros Ultra is the more interesting one, but let's quickly go over the Aero-G first. The Aero-G is a DDR4 motherboard, and is the lower end of a pair of Aero-branded boards that Gigabyte targets at creators. The board features no built-in RGB, but does have these psychedelic, trippy colour things. Under the VRM heatsink is a 14-phase V-Core VRM powered by 8 plus 4-pin EPS power connectors. There are 4 M.2 slots, all at Gen 4 bandwidth, and all of them are covered by heatsinks. Like mentioned before, the top PCIe slot is Gen 5 x16 and connected to the CPU, while the two lower slots are Gen 3 x4 and connected to the chipset. There are a total of 8 PWM fan headers scattered throughout the board, two pairs of 5V and 12V RGB headers, two USB 2s, one USB 3 and one more Type-C front panel connector for cases that support it. For rear I.O., the Aero-G features two USB 2s, four USB 3s, two more USB 3.2 Gen 2s and two more USB 3.2 Gen 2s which are Type-C's. The highlighted Type-C port also supports Gigabyte's Vision Link technology and a Thunderbolt card can also be added to make this port a Thunderbolt port. There is one HDMI output and one display port in which you can use as a display Pass through with Vision Link or Thunderbolt on the Type C port. The Wi Fi is only Wi Fi 6 and not 6E for some reason, though the LAN is a nice Intel 2.5 Gigabit port. Usability wise, there is no postcode display, just 4 debug LEDs on the side. You also get a reset button at the bottom and a Q Flash Plus button beside it. Moving on to the more interesting board, the Z690i Aeros Ultra is a potent ITX motherboard. Starting with the VRM, the Z690i Aeros Ultra features a 10-phase V-Core VRM with 90M smart power stages. There's also a thin heatsink and a backplate to cool the VRM, which is greatly appreciated being an SFF enthusiast myself. The rest of the board is packed to the brim, or rather straight up overflowing. The single PCIe slot is Gen 5 x16, connected directly to the CPU. For M.2 slots, Gigabyte is using this daughter board in order to have enough space. 
The M.2 slot on the lower side of the daughter board is the one that's actually connected to the CPU, while the one on the top is connected to the chipset. Both are Gen 4 by 4 bandwidth. I would have preferred to have the primary drive on top. So for most users that only have one M.2 drive, they do not need to take out the daughter board to install it. Speaking of that, taking out the daughter board is no trivial task. Out of the box, our unit had a front audio connector stuffed in the gap here, blocking the daughter board from coming out. Other than that, three screws hold down the top heatsink and another holds down the daughter board. Once the screws are out, lift the daughter board from both sides to take it out. There is a connector labelled as external power on here, and Gigabyte includes a cable to connect it to a Molex on your power supply. The menu does not make this clear, but we ask Gigabyte and they say it's for extra power for the daughter board and to use it if required. We're not sure exactly when it is required, maybe when using the fan connector on here, but hopefully they can clarify this in a future revision of the manual so users are not confused if something does not work. Oh, and yes, this is the front HD audio connector. They had no space on the board, so it's a dongle. And no, it's not the only connector that's a dongle running off the motherboard. There are a total of four PWM fan headers on the motherboard, and only one is the usual type. The other three all require the use of a dongle, and one of which is even on the M.2 daughter board. The USB 2 port is also a dongle, while the Type-C and USB 3 ports are on the board itself. For real I.O., you get a decent number of USB ports for an ITX board. Two USB 2s, two USB 3s, three USB 3.2 Gen 2s, and one more USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C. Like on the AeroG, Wi-Fi is only Wi-Fi 6, not 6E, and LAN is 2.5 gigabits. There is also one HDMI port and one display port if you buy a CPU with an iGPU. Usability-wise, the QFlash Pass button is on the rear I.O., while a reset button sits on the daughter board. So that's it for today's video. Let us know what your thoughts are about the new Z690 motherboard. Do you like the Aorus Ultra ITX's chunky design? The Aero G's silver theme? Over the next few weeks, we will have plenty of 12th Gen, Z690 and DDR5 content as well. So subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.